All right, all right, all right. Here we go talking about something better. Is there something better? And so the thing that hit me today was during my time with God, during my uh, Bible reading time, I read 1 Timothy chapter 4, uh, verse 12. I think it was through 14. Anyway, through that entire section, uh, Paul is reaching out to Timothy, who is a young man, and he is giving him advice. He's giving him advice. It's a famous passage. Uh, don't let people look down on you because you're young. Um, uh, conduct yourself with love, faith, and purity. Um, and he gives him more instruction on how to lead despite him being young. And right at the end of that section is something that really, really struck me today um, for where I was at. Um, and he wrote, um, persist in this, for you do this not only to save yourself, but others. And so the question that popped into my head is, is, is in all those moments where I'm sitting there and I'm striving for something better, right? Whether it's physically, relationally, intellectually, in my money, in my spirituality, whatever it is that I am pursuing. When I hold it on to myself and I make it about me, I want to quit very quickly, very easily. Um, especially if I haven't told anybody, right? In my mind, I begin justifying, is it really worth me being physically fit to wake up at 5.30 in the morning and go work out. And very quickly I tell myself, no, no it's not. However, <clears throat> when I shift and begin to understand that my striving for something better is not even just about my own life, but it's about the life of my children. It's about the life of the people that I come into contact with. That in my striving for something better, I'm setting an example for other people. Well, that carries a whole different weight in it, especially when it comes to my wife and my kids. I can sit there all day long and preach to people and preach to my wife and preach to my kids. Hey, guys, you need to be physically fit. You should be doing some activity. And they're going to look at me and they're going to go, are you? And I'm going to go, no. But. If I can begin to shed the pounds, if I can begin to be physically fit, if I can begin to strive in this area, it's going to create an example for those around me. If I can begin leveling up in my business, if I begin to discover something better within my business, I could be an example to others. Not only has it benefited me, not only have I upped my game, but I can be an example to others. That the same old garbage, the same old crap, the same things that we've been working through mentally, the same the same umbrella that we've been working on, or I don't even know how to describe it, the mindset, the mindset that we've been working with or that you've been working with is wrong and that there is something better. I want to set that example. I want that life for myself, but I also get to set that example for my kids. Within the church world, there's something that's called PKs, uh, pastor's kids. And I think that, and pastor's kids are notoriously bad, right? They're, they're like trouble child, right? Problem child. Um, and I've developed this term over the years called MKs. See, as a youth pastor, I would deal with PKs and I would deal with MKs. And MKs are missionary kids. And you know what's amazing about missionary kids is they're always awesome. I don't think I've ever met a bad missionary kid. Bad missionary kids just don't exist. And I think the reason why is because missionaries are walking it out. They're setting an example for their kids. They're walking by this crazy faith. They're moving to a foreign country, not knowing all the things and things that go along. And they're walking this faith out and the kids see that. And they see the example of their parents that there is something better. And then on the flip side, the pastor's kids, right? They see mom or dad or whoever and they're given a sermon and they're put on a pedestal and then they get to live with them. And they see the example that's set there. They don't see anything different. They don't see something better being acted out. The example that they're seeing is the exact opposite. So the example that I want to be, the example that Paul called Timothy to be, to save himself and to save others, that's what I want. I want to save myself and I want to save others. And so if I'm thinking about quitting, I need to think, wait, is this something better that I'm pursuing? Is it going to help me? But is it also going to help my kids? Is it going to help my wife? Is it going to help other people? Yes, and that keeps me going. Hope this has been an encouragement to you today. Um, thank you for uh, watching. Share this with friends. Share this with families. And always ask yourself the question, 
Is there something better? And I think you'll always find the answer is yes. Now, are you willing to go for it? Thank you. God bless.